welcome guys to the first guest episode of the Real Connor Miller podcast. Um, I have actually someone near and dear to me. She's my actual health coach in real life, um, Belena here. She's going to be sharing some of her story um, just about wellness and her journey with some struggles that she's had to go through in her life and finding balance and health and just uh, general wellness and becoming just a better person. Um, I think it's super beneficial to share not only the business side of things, but the emotional side of things, um, because if we don't have the emotional things intact, the business side will never come to fruition. So without further ado, Milena, you can introduce yourself and kind of give our listeners just a little background about you and who you are and where you come from and what you do. <laughs> yes. Well, first of all, thank you. I'm so stoked to be the first guest on your podcast. Um, but yes, I work with Connor. I am a registered dietitian. I went to school bachelor's and master's in nutrition dietetics, went through a severe eating disorder, and now I'm here helping other people go through, you know, whether they're struggling with an eating disorder or just want to live a healthier lifestyle for themselves. That is what I'm here for. So yeah. How did I, we meet again? We met through John. We met through John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We went through John. So that's something that I kind of want to get into a little bit on this episode too, is just the openness to connecting. Um, yes. I think there's a lot of stuff in life where people have this fear of connecting with other human beings and this insecurity and like people are always comparing themselves to other people. And I feel like if we can kind of flush all of those preconceived dispositions down the toilet, the relationships would be a lot better. Um, for Absolutely. instance, like I would imagine that most people think that I have my shit together and that I'm living a very healthy life and that I have great habits. And frankly, like that's the reason why I have her here. We're working on it. I mean, I, <laughs> I have great habits in my life when it comes to business. Um, that's the one thing that I've just gone all in and committed on for the last seven years. But the other parts of my life have have began to suffer and I've noticed that you know I think in entrepreneurship a lot of us lose ourselves in the work Absolutely. and um, you know I think that's a very risky road to go down and having the self-awareness to be able to take yourself out of that and even say that you need help I think is huge um, you know and, and really though like it took me a long time I mean I've bet I've had really bad habits with health for I don't know five years you know right. I haven't really done it at all and then I was like man you know I know that the rest of my life is going to be lost if I don't fix this foundation. And I think that's why I got you here. Yeah, absolutely. And foundation is like the key word there. So what I tell everybody, and I probably had this spiel with you too, but like your, your body is like, like a, a house, right? And to build a sturdy house, you need a sturdy foundation. And so that's what we consider your nutrition and like your, your physical fitness and like, just like your, your lifestyle habits, like th those make up your foundation. And if you don't have those, then just like a house, you're gonna, your insides are going to start falling apart, right? So it's not necessarily that you need to jump on the next crash diet or do what your best friend's doing just because it's working for them. Like the reason why a lot of people are unsuccessful with what they're, what they're trying to do in terms of like dieting, workouts, X, Y, and Z is they always want to do what everyone else is doing and it doesn't work for them. So it's really important that you find out what works for you so that way you can like sustain it for a long, long time and you're going to be successful at it. And I mean, you'd say that at least from my understanding of the work that we've done together, I would say that your biggest philosophy is that everyone's different and that yes. everyone deserves some type of unique approach to their health. Can you kind of talk to us about how you source that approach? Yeah. So everyone is different. We are genetically different. So I use the genetic testing, uh, which we did with you. And basically we can see like your genetic variants and certain genes are associated with how your body metabolizes and absorbs specific nutrients. But we're also looking at it from like a muscle standpoint as well. So we can look at the genes that are within your um, fat, specifically fast twitch type two we're looking at um, to see how you like work out best. Where's your advantage at? Whether it's endurance or more of like a resistance power, power based training. So from there, I'm able to create diet plans. I'm able to create workout plans that are aligned with your actual genotype. And that's important because say, I always use this example, but like for vitamin A, we use, we look at a gene called BCMO1 and there's a specific variant that is considered a high risk variant. And what that essentially means is you're not able to effectively absorb that nutrient into your bloodstream because that gene that we're looking at is involved in the uh, conversion of inactive 
vitamin A to the active form to be absorbed into your blood. So what we can see based off your results are, okay, how are you utilizing these nutrients? And most people will be like, oh, I'm eating like carrots. I'm eating like all this stuff. Like, why is my vitamin A low? And it could be that you're not absorbing it as effectively. So in that case, we need to make dietary changes first before just jumping right to a supplement or right to like a quick fix or like an external, you know, band-aid, I like to call sure. it. So that's pretty much how I do it within within my business. And yeah, everybody's different. And your genetic variants, they don't change. Like you do have the ability to uh, influence your genetic expression. And that's something a little bit different. It's epigenetics, but it's all the same, same, same uh, type, of, type of thing that it's all considered. So yeah, it's, it's definitely like people don't realize how, how important it is to have some, like a personalized approach to nutrition and sure, fitness. Sure, and yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'd, I'd second that because I've done everything under the sun before going the personalized approach route. Um, you know, I've done the keto, I've done the intermittent fasting, I've done the, you know, every, the Weight Watchers, like everything that you can think of that's like a health plan, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> I've done the only lifting, I've done the only cardio, you know? And like, I felt like shit on everything, you know? Yeah. Because I was not doing the things that were personalized for the goals that I was looking to hit, you know? Yeah. I mean, I would say since we started working together and, and specifically like when I actually stick to the plan, and yeah. that's, that's one thing <laughs> that I'm gonna talk about to you guys because like, there's, it's, it's, I'm not saying that it's okay to not stick to a plan, but it's okay to not be perfect, exactly. right? Like none of us are perfect and I'm never going to be on this show and pretending that I'm the one that has everything all together and figured out and so on and so forth. I mean, I slip up all the time. Um, it's just having the awareness that it's happening and getting yourself back on track. That's the most important thing. So exactly. when I, when I speak to that, like specifically when I stick to the plan and I stick to the eating habits and I stick to the workout and I stick to the moving my body and meditation and so on and so forth, like I feel amazing. And, and really the genetics uh, helped a lot too because we got on a supplement plan um, with a bunch of different deficiencies that I didn't even know I had um, until we did the genetic testing. And I would say I've been on those SUPS for around a month and a half, two months, and I feel a significant difference, um, especially in my energy levels and just my cognitive ability. I'd say that ever since I started taking the supplements, I feel sharper in the mind, I feel like I have more energy, and I actually feel more motivated too. Yeah, that's that was awesome, yeah. So it's, it's also important to, um, to say about the genetic testing too, it's not necessarily diagnostic of a deficiency, it's we're able to actually kind of like infer like, okay, if you're not absorbing it as effectively, you may be deficient in it, which right. is why I like to bring in blood testing to kind of like be like uh, complementary to the genetic testing. So if we see that, okay, Connor is not able to effectively absorb vitamin A, I'd be curious, you know, a month down the line after implementing these things, like let's check your vitamin A levels, see if you're actually deficient or not. So when we did your genetic testing, but you also, um, I don't know if you, you told, like talked about this at all, but like you were like experiencing like acid reflux, mm -hmm. like, like a lot of things that you just couldn't really get a handle couldn't on. Couldn't pinpoint going to, what was causing it. Exactly. So we had him go see, um, one of the clinical specialists that I actually work with. And that's who I refer all my clients to. And so I was like, Connor, you need to go see him <laughs> because he's going to help you out. Um, and so they, they chatted, they got him on like a regimen that, that worked for him. And didn't you say like the completely eliminated, completely eliminated? um, yeah. I would say that I haven't, well, let's say, because frankly, like there's nights that I get stoned and I just eat like, and, and it's just the one thing that I'm still working on as yes. far as my health goes, We're working um, on that. but I get acid reflux if I do that. But if I stick to the plan that's been laid out and, and with the supplements and the eating, I've completely eliminated the acid reflux and it was yeah. terrible like to the point where there was times where I didn't even want to go to an event or something because it just bothered me so exactly. much. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's it's important you bring that up too because people like your health can determine a lot of things obviously, right? But like it can also like hold you back from like being social and like actually being who you are. So like to bring my eating disorder back up, like when I was going through all of that, I started to shut, pe shut like people out of my life, like isolated myself. Like I didn't want to be seen sure. out in public because then people start talking and asking you questions and X, Y, and Z. And, and it's like, when you don't have your health, you really start to kind of like, 
a lot of things come to come to the surface and you're just like, holy shit, like if I don't get myself together, like that's exactly I was literally in that exact frame of mind the first time I spoke to you. Yeah. Um, and, and the one thing that I really want people to take away specifically from this episode is that you don't have to wait till you get to that point. Exactly. Um, so many people wait till they get to that point and myself included, you know, I mean, you wait till you get to this point where you're like, oh shit, like I'm really, really have to make a change here. I'm headed down like the path of no return, but you can get off the elevator before it gets to the bottom. That's you right. don't have to go all the way to the rock bottom of your health. I mean, if you ask yourself the questions every day, like, what are my goals as, as far as my health goes? How do I want to feel? It doesn't even have to be about looks, man. Like, my health isn't about looks. I'm married and I got a kid on the way and I got already a kid. Like, I don't <laughs> care about that. I care about feeling better and functioning, and functioning optimally. Yeah, I'm, again, so glad you brought that up because something that I always preach, and you know this more than anybody and just people in my circle know this too, is like the physical results are a byproduct. Like I don't even want to like talk with somebody about like, okay, here's how we're going to get you a six pack of abs. No, here's how we are going to get you healthy. Yep. Like that, that's like pretty much at the forefront of like what I do in my business. It's like, if somebody's coming to me and they're like, I want to look skinny on the beach, you know, in, in the next week, I'm like, well, I'm not your person to get you there. Like, yep. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to put you in a drastic cut. I'm not going to give you like a 900 calorie diet. Like that's all like, like talk to somebody else like and i've I'm, done that i'm not I've done going that, to do that so many times just trying to go completely like aggressive on health and diet and like all that stuff yeah. and frankly every time i tried that i ended up feeling like shit well unfortunately for for most people they get stuck in that cyclical like crash diet, you know. That was me. Remember we talked about yes. my metabolism. You're like, well, yes. man, you eat one meal a day, but then on Saturday you eat seven meals and it's like, that ain't good. You know? So it really what's going on in your body um, without giving like a huge science lecture is like there's a, a huge metabolic adaptation going on. So internally your body thinks you're starving. You may not be starving, right? Like actually being like, oh my God, like I'm famished, like somebody that hasn't eaten in six years. But your body it's from like, it all started really from like the evolutionary, like when there was famine and people were actually starving and your body's going to like the self-defense mode. So what it's doing is if you're putting yourself on like a 900 calorie diet, when your real maintenance calories are say 1500, right? It's hypothetical. Those aren't really sure, actually sure. your maintenance calories. Um, your body again, you're eating in a huge deficit. So your body thinks you're starving. So what it's going to do, it's going to compensate for that deficit. So it's going to bring your metabolism all the way down to reserve energy. So your new maintenance is 900 now, Sure. which is why initially people will drop the weight and then they hit a plateau. Yep. And in order to see more results, they need to go even lower. And at that point, what, what, 500 calories? Right. Yeah. Like now you're, you're eating nothing. Yeah. Right. So that's where you see a lot of eating disorders or eating disorder tendencies kind of manifest because people don't understand really what's going on at like a cellular level. Sure. There's a lot of hormone shifts. So like leptin and ghrelin are the two um, hormones that are predominantly um, managing your appetite. So leptin is more so for satiety. Ghrelin is when you hear your stomach grumbling, like that's, that's the hormone ghrelin, sure. the, the hunger hormone we call it. And so what's happening is your leptin decreases. So you feel less satisfied, but your ghrelin increases. So now you're like ravenously starving, right? Your body, your body's like, I'm hungry, feed me. And it's also like indirectly making room like in your fat stores. So once you start eating again, it's ramping up and getting ready to store it as fat. Sure. So that's why you see, again, a lot of people gain the weight back and then even more after. 100%. I mean, so I, it's like, I did all that, like, especially with the aggressive dieting and I lost like 40 pounds in like three months. And then I was like, man, I feel awful. Yeah. It's, yeah. It felt awful. It was terrible, man. I mean, I, I felt like I was losing weight and then that's about it. I was like, man, this sucks. Well, not only that too, but like also you're depriving yourself of like actual like important essential nutrients that your body and your cells need to function sure. throughout the day. Sure. That's probably also why I felt like I had no energy, didn't feel as motivated. Um, you know, in the last two months, literally, I feel like I've had like a different fire lit within myself. And yeah. I, I credit a lot to that, to just changing the habits and, and as far as health goes. Yeah. That's sure. awesome. Yeah. I've seen, I've definitely seen you grow. I want to ask sure. you like a super like outer space question and maybe you have an answer, maybe you don't, but do you think that any time in the near future we'll be able to choose to change our genetics? 
Are you saying from like a genetic variant standpoint? Like not just taking a test and having different habits and things like that, but like actually being able to insert like different genetics and like switch them and stuff in your body. Damn. That I feel is, like that would be like some like Captain America shit. I'm actually meeting with the founder of the genetics company tomorrow. Okay. I'll ask him. Yeah, definitely. I'm yeah. interested. I mean, yeah. you got, you know, Kathy Wood. Um, she's uh, the founder of ARK Invest, and she's really, really big on genomics and talks Wait, about... Wait, I just watched that live thing with oh, Elon last night. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a huge Elon stan. I yeah. love Elon. Yep. Holy oh, shit. <laughs> Elon, he just bought 10% of Twitter, and probably <laughs> just because he's ready to change it up over there. And, and I think that'll be really interesting. But for the whole ge genomics thing, she says that genomics will be a $2 billion industry within the next five years. And... I guess I just don't understand the science enough to really dive into it, but it's still like super interesting to me to think about somebody having the ability to change their genetics. Right. Well, honestly, that's what I keep saying is the future of nutrition is personalized. I have that on my website written. I'm like the future of nutrition is personalized because it is. And the field of nutrigenomics, which is what we're doing, bringing in the genetic testing and, and looking at how it interacts with like the nutrients that we eat the science is finally catching up, which is why we have uh, this technology where we're able to see these things. But we're still only scratching the surface. Like there is so much more to be like researched, studied and uncovered that I really do think down the line, maybe in like 10 years, like this is gonna be like a standardized practice for, for pretty much all nutrition professionals, which I personally believe should be the case because how many times have you gone to, um, just the doctor's office and they educate you on eat your fruits, eat your vegetables. Amazing. Those are great for you. Right. But like you need something more concrete and more like, like personal to you because you have your specific body composition goals. You have your specific health goals. How are we going to get you there other than finding out what you need specifically? Sure. sure. You know what I mean? No, I get it hundred percent. And, um, and the issue is too, with, with most people is when they talk about like losing weight, they're talking about just losing that number on the scale. But what they need to realize is that that number on the scale doesn't differentiate between fat mass and muscle mass. Didn't you tell me that when you had the eating disorder, you were almost the same weight as you are now, but you feel like 10 times better now because of the health part? So when I had my eating disorder, I just completely didn't eat anything. Like I ate like a carrot a day and I was working out like three times a day. Yeah. Like it was really just unhealthy. And so what I, what started happening in my body was I was losing like my muscle mass. Yeah. Like usually that, that's what, that's what will happen if people are only like, you know, if they're eating inadequate amount of calories to either maintain or like grow muscle, they're going to lose their muscle if they don't eat a sufficient enough protein and carbohydrate in their diet. And that may not even be like lose your muscle, you don't look as muscular. It's like lose your muscle and, and you your feel skin tired. and bones. Yeah. Lose your muscle, you look like emaciated. That's right. what I looked like. Well, I like had, and you probably just feel tired all the time. Yes. You know? Because you're literally like depriving your body of um, important vitamins and minerals that are like literally energy for your cells for them to function. So when people are not getting enough like fruits, vegetables, things that are really abundant in your vitamins, minerals, and, and whatnot, they often feel tired. Yeah, yeah. It's not that they have an eating disorder. No, it's like you're not eating enough. Your body's lacking something. Right, right. And usually what people will do is they'll jump to supplements, which is kind of just like a cheating. I did that in the past. So yeah, yeah it's I, I get cheating. It. Sure. So what I always do, and you know this, like food first. We're yep. always going to do a food first approach because, like, first of all, who doesn't love food? I love food. <laughs> like, I love food. <laughs> Um, but it's important, you know, like getting it through like whole nutrient dense foods. But again, it's not a one size fits all. It's like, okay, we're, we're going to get it through food, but say somebody has, you know, an allergy or somebody has a dietary restriction, whether it be for like a health concern or just a dietary preference. Sure. Right. And if we're not able to get those nutrients through food, then and only then I will supplement with like an actual supplement. Gotcha. But it's important to understand where your supplements are coming from. And right, right. You know I preach yeah, this yeah, all no, the 100%. time. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, I can't even order the supplements that I get from her online. I literally have to call a person to do it because like they don't sell them to the general public. Yeah. It's, it's really nice. I mean, yeah. and it just, it like, that gives me such a better feeling of trust and like comfort too. Yeah. I mean, if I was working with a health coach that was like, hey, just go on Amazon and order all this shit, I'd probably be like, oh, I don't know about this. No. No, 
But it's it's just really important to do your due diligence on those things because you're literally putting something into your body. Hundred percent. And that's that's like. Well, I think I feel like with with nutrition, everybody just looks for the easiest fix. Exactly. And they don't think about like how it could possibly affect you, right? Like they don't exactly. play the tape all the way through. It's like, oh, I want to lose weight. Let me buy this metabolism booster. You know. And and honestly, like people should be scared when it comes to over the counter supplements because like. What what's, what it's doing is your liver is a really important organ in your body. It does a lot of things. Um, and your liver is processing that. When you have something that's like just junk and not actually what it says it is, it's toxic to your body. Sure, sure. And so there's been studies. There's been lawsuits. There, Like I can pull them all up. Like I literally research lawsuits on specific supplement companies. Um, but what had happened to at this one company was, and I'm not going to put any companies on blast, but what happened was these people were developing liver disease and had to get liver transplants because you're, it, they said it was this one thing on the bottle. And mm -hmm. it's like when it actually got, uh, when a bunch of these supplements got tested, like DNA tested, almost 80, 79% was like the, about the approximate amount of, um, like, DNA that came back negative for what was on the bottle. Sure, but I mean, I feel like that also kind of, and I, 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 my thoughts on like big pharma, I mean, I hate it. I'm, I'm totally against like just going to the doctor and getting a prescription to try to fix yourself. None of that shit works. Um, and frankly, I feel like all of those things are to keep you coming back um, because I've gone that route. I've taken, I mean, not even just for health, like just for, uh, well, we'll talk about the mental health side of that. Like basically growing up, my mother's religion was like going to a psychiatrist and getting a prescription for a pill that makes you happy or makes you good or whatever. Um, so I've done that route. I've tried everything. And I felt like every time I tried something like that, it just made something else worse. worse it made yeah. maybe the symptom that I was trying to um, get better, a little bit better. But then there was a side effect that I'm like, oh, but now I need this. You know, and I right. feel like that's a lot of the health industry too. It's like you take this, but then it creates this. So now you got to buy this. Yeah. I have my thoughts. <laughs> I definitely have my thoughts. Um, I don't necessarily agree with a lot of it. Like, sure. I, I really don't. And I think that if people take the time to education, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power, people. Like, I promise you, if you took the time to do, like, the research and figure things out and, like, going the approach of, like, functional, holistic, like, those types of things, like... Like, and I'm not saying like, oh, if someone was diagnosed with cancer, screw the doctors, yeah, like, don't yeah, go, yeah. you know, like there's certain things that are like, yes, definitely go get the help that you, that like, that you need and you should receive. I think we're specifically talking we're to talking, the people yeah. that want to take the easy way and just exactly. buy a pill and get better. Exactly. Exactly. So. Cause if, that was me. I did that so many times, like, especially with the health part. And I'm just like, oh man, I'll just take this fat burner and I'll be fine. You know, I yeah. think even back in the day. Uh, there was a point in my life where I weighed like 260, dude. I'm like 198 now or something like that. Yeah. I mean, and like at that time, I, I was taking something called clenbuterol. And it's like <laughs> something, is, it's this yeah. thing that's supposed to like, like rapidly cut fat off your body. And like, I felt like a total head case because I was trying to take the easy way. Yeah. And it, like, it's, it's so important to like emphasize that eating healthy, living a healthy lifestyle takes work and it's hard. Sure, it is. It's hard for it people is. to change habits that have been instilled in them for so long, which going through the eating disorder sucked, but like I was at such a young age that I'm, I'm like glad that it actually happened because sure. I was, I was overweight. Like I definitely needed like a dietary change. I definitely needed a lifestyle change. Shouldn't have gone the route that I did, sure. but like it, it like paved the way for what I am now. And like going to school for nutrition and really learning and understanding how the human body works in order to build myself back up and fuel my body properly. I believe, I believe I'm a big believer in like the fact that things happen in our life to prepare us for whatever is there for us in the future. Yeah. So I, I get that hundred percent because I was a heroin addict for four years and I would never change it for the world. Yeah. Um, I don't think that I would be able to handle the success that I have now, nor do I think I would be the person I am today had I not gone through those things. So exactly. I definitely feel that. And I'm sure you probably feel the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have a lot of uh, young people reaching out to me and because I'm very vocal about like what had, what happened to me. Yeah. And I, I, a lot of people sometimes are not as strong 
to share their story and that's totally fine. Like they do not have to, Sure. but I feel like it being, being like a, a coach or a, a nutrition or a dietitian for people, like I'm more relatable if I share. Definitely. So when I, when I do talk about these things again, very openly, like whether it's on social media or just like in a room with people, I have people reach out to me and they're like, holy cow, like your story, like I totally resonate with it. And I love that. Well, I think that's, that's another thing. So like Part of the message of this show is that you can fuck your life up to hell and back, and it's not too late to unfuck yourself. Yeah. Um, and I know maybe that's like a little bit of a rigid approach, but I mean, it's so true. You could literally hit total rock bottom and be a homeless bum on the street at 47 years old, and it's not too late to change your life. And th the problem is nobody wants to take the long road, and the long road is the best road. The shortcuts are what put you in the bad positions. What it's a, it's important to mention, that, like w to your point, is that yes, it's not too late, but you have to want to make the change. Yeah, like and you you ha you can't expect like you could have easily hired me, right? And then I could have given you like you could have been like, All right, do it for me, right? Sure. That's not how it works. Sure, that's really not how it works. Well, like, I mean, frankly, I don't think you would have even taken me on as a client. I like definitely would not have. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But that's like I literally just talked about. So there's there's an episode. I think it was episode three where I talked about. Um, and I'm going to go into a faith route here that in our life, God is going to meet us halfway if we do the work. Um, and I think yeah. a lot of people pray and hope for something to change, but they don't do the work. And that's the same thing with your health. It's the same thing with anything in life. The good results come when you actually do the work. You can't expect the good results by not actually doing the things that bring the good results. Exactly. Um, but oftentimes with nutrition though, like we like to use nutrition as like a proactive approach to, you know, avoiding long-term chronic illnesses, right? Sure. Sometimes it is too late and you do develop those chronic illness, illnesses, but now what we would have to do is more like a managing symptoms type thing. So what it's important to understand about that is the food that you eat can manifest into chronic illnesses. So if you wanna be proactive about it, that's where you need to make those dietary shifts and those lifestyle changes in order to minimize risk, right? Sure, sure. Sometimes, like for me, for example, my dad has heart disease. Like that honestly is one of the um, first traumatic experiences of my life. Like I saw my dad have a heart attack at the table in sixth grade. Like his heart stopped for 13 seconds, food went flying like everywhere. Like it was the most traumatic experience I've, I've had, you know, to go through at such a young age, but like, that being said, like I, I'm at a high risk for heart disease because sure. my my father genetically I'm already at higher risk. So knowing that I want to be proactive, like I want to do things that are going to help. You could go two ways. Risk. You could say, oh, well, I'm already predisposed to this, so I'm fucked. Yeah. Or you could say, I'm going to be a problem preventer and I'm going to do the proper work to where I'm exactly. not going to have this happen in my life. And if it does, I'm still going to know how to mitigate it. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, like people also need to be aware of like their family health history too, because again, that puts them at a higher sure. risk. And now it's even more essential for you to be just a little bit proactive in that sense. I actually hired you maybe three months after I found out that stomach cancer ran in my family. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know that, right? And, and you know yeah. from, from us working together that one of the biggest things that I've dealt with is stomach problems. Right. And as soon as I found that out, I was like, dude, I have to do something about this now because if I don't, it's going to turn into a problem. Exactly, exactly. And I think like, um, to also to your point of being consistent, like you definitely, when you're consistent with something, like you're phenomenal. Like it, it's so great and, and you know that about yourself sure. too. Um, but life gets in the way, right? Life can get in the way and throw you some curveballs. But it's important that like your health is always going to need to be important, no matter what. Sure. There's things that like okay, you're working on a project, life throws a curveball at you. Those are things that are going to be okay if you put a pause on them, right? You you shouldn't put a pause on your health. Sure. Is what I'm well, saying. Well, in the past I would. I just say, oh well, I'm doing the health, but I'll drop that because I got to do this. And right. then what I've realized through working with you and just other people that I've kind of spoken to uh, in the entrepreneurship space that work on their health is that if I lose the health, I could lose everything. Right. You know, it's like, I don't want to lose everything. Yeah. If I don't have that health right, I'm at high risk of losing a lot. Absolutely. That's like back to the whole foundation thing. That's like pulling the rug right out from under you. Yeah. It's like you're building yourself up, you're building yourself up. 
oh my God, this is great. Something comes comes out, you know, out of nowhere, and then you just pull the rug, and then you're like completely down. That's basically the analogy of what of would life. you say to the people specifically who just don't feel motivated to be healthy? They just are comfortable where they are. Maybe they have a fast metabolism, so they don't care if they eat fast food mm-hmm. every day, and they still stay skinny. What would you say to those people? Small changes. Small changes first, and the people that tell me all the time, I do this all the time, I have a fast metabolism, I don't gain weight. Don't view your health from a physical standpoint. Like, appearance, physical, don't view it like that. Because there's people that are a past the eye test of being skinny, quote unquote, but their fat mass percentage is like through the roof. And sure. that's where you'll start to see disease manifest, is if you have a really high fat percentage, low muscle mass. Muscle is more um, metabolically active tissue, and that's why most people that have a lot of muscle are like always like hungry all the time, right? Like they're burning through a lot because muscle is more uh, metabolically active than fat. But also on the scale, it you weigh more because sure. muscle also weighs more than fat. And it's also another thing to keep in mind that body composition is the most important thing when we're, we're determining, okay, I wanna lose weight, I wanna put on mass. We need to look at your body composition. We need to see what percentage of that is muscle, what percentage is, is fat. And sometimes I'll have clients that are like, ah, the scale's like not moving that much. But when you do a side by side, it's like the inches are down. Sure. Their muscle, like they feel great, right? They're more compact. And that's honestly because muscle is more compact and it weighs more than fat. Sure. Like sure. it's just, it's more from education where you really need to start. So to those people, I would say, just educate yourself a little bit and then make small changes and small steps that are going to sure. be feasible and easy for you to sustain. And I, th- and I agree with that too, because I mean, I've heard two approaches to goal setting um, and I've, and I've tried both approaches. One of the approaches being set unrealistic goals that you may never achieve because you're going to try your ass off to achieve those goals. And I've tried that. And frankly, it just doesn't work for me. Um, one of the core values in my personality is logic and reason. So when I set some goal that seems unattainable, I just give up and I'm like, I can't fucking do this. But if I go into it and I set realistic goals, realistic expectations, and I make small changes on a daily basis, eventually those turn into the massive changes that I'm looking to see. I, so yeah, yeah, I can, I can definitely agree with that. I also like, I would never, you know, right off the bat, just be like, I'm going to be a billionaire tomorrow. Right. right? Like I need to need to like set myself up for that. I don't think I'm, I could never not be a billionaire. Right. Like, so there's, there's also like, don't limit yourself, but also stay, you know, stay a little, you know, far reaching. So that way you still are a little bit more motivated to work a little bit harder. Sure but don't ever like limit yourself. Definitely. Right? And, and when it comes to that, like you could say it in the way of, Hey, set short term goals, midterm goals, long term goals, and your right. master goal. Right? right. So like my master goal is in 10 years, I want to open my own school and change the way that education is done. But do I think about that on a daily basis? No, because I know that the other goals are going to get me there and I have right. to hit those first before I can even do that. Which is, which all ties back to those small changes. Right. So like doing, starting things that, you know, you can, it's, it's kind of similar. Someone once told me, they're like, when you're doing a to-do list, make a column that's like quick and easy and then hard. Yep. And I was like, okay. So I, that's what I do now. I'm like, okay, what can I do that's quick and easy? Cause that's going to still make me feel like I'm accomplishing things. Sure. And then I can then It's going to build the, that confidence and then you're going to be motivated to do more. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how you have to approach health and fitness. Yeah. It's like you can't expect to be um, like this massive bodybuilder overnight if you're somebody that needs to lean out 50 pounds first, right? We need to tackle that first and then we need to, you know, work on building up the muscles. Or you can't expect to do an hour's worth of yoga. That's super difficult if you haven't done yoga but five Mm -hmm. times in your life. (laughs) Is that an outward projection? That's an outward (laughs) projection. This morning I did yoga and I was like, yeah, I was so ready to do it. I freaking got on the mat and I'm like, oh my God dude, this is really difficult. Well, it opens up your eyes to where you kind of need to focus on. So like, again, just going back to our conversation is if you know that you need to make some changes, like identify like three, like do three and and start there. And then it'll motivate you more to go on and do like bigger changes and, and try new things and, and really just uncover like what your, like your body basically, like you need to know your body. 
And I think like I talk a lot on the show just about self-awareness in general, m more so like on the mental side. Um, but this coincides too, because if you have the self-awareness for what works for your body and your health, you're going to do those things. But if you don't have that self-awareness, it's like you're just spinning in limbo, hoping things change. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the other thing. It's like, People are just like, oh, I wish, or yeah. I'm like, why? Why do you wish? Like, why don't you believe that you can do it? And sure. Like, I, I can't. It's hard. I'm like, <laughs> but no. I I'm mean, like, no. What, what, we what lost you, a good one. What would you say to those people? Like the people that just think that they can't do it, or the people that are like, oh man, like I'm never gonna be able to stay consistent with this. Well, that's where mindset comes in comes into play because you do going into it, and I have my ebook, and and I start off with mindset for that reason. So. I'm not like an expert in mindset and like all that stuff, but I have been talking to people that are. And so I've been working on that myself too, because I'm not perfect either. Like I, sure. I, I practice what I preach, but I'm still learning these new things and sure. like implementing new things that work for me. So mindset is a big one. And I always like to start off with that because it's eating is way beyond just physical. It's a lot, it's, there's a lot of psychological uh, pieces to it. And so you need to like create that mindset where food is fuel, first of all, because a lot of people turn to food, uh, whether it be like emotional an stress escape. and escape. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it may be, but the, how you view food, food is important, but also like you have to put yourself into a mindset where like you're doing this for like long term. Sure. Sure. Like there's no quick fix about, about this. Nope. And there shouldn't be ever because it's just like, you're well, setting yourself up for failure with the food too. Like I'll speak on that a little bit for myself. Yeah. Um, with, with coming from a background of being a heroin addict, uh, when I, back before I started working with you, I never really thought about food besides just eating and just like, Hey, I just need to eat and get it over with or whatever. And then once I started to kind of reflect on the feelings I would have while eating and start to kind of do a little bit of research, one eating releases dopamine in your brain, the same, uh, neuroreceptor that gets released when you do drugs so back when I before I became like consciously aware of the eating part I would just sit down and freaking stuff my face and I didn't realize why I was doing that until I started to think about it but now I realize I was doing that because it was the one time where I didn't have to think and I was just focused on eating but I was yeah. just eating as fast as I could but I wasn't really thinking about what am I eating what is this doing to my body yeah. like having the mindfulness too and now that I've tried to kind of approach it that way I feel that I haven't really uh, had the problem of like eating the food just eat 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 it's like oh, what am yeah. I eating? What am I chewing? How does it taste? You know, incorporating all the senses, kind of like what you said. Yeah. And your digestive system's like, whoa, dude, like what's yeah. going on? Right. Like, slow down, buddy. Um, I'm such a slow eater and I don't care because one, I want to savor my food. I do not want that to, I do not want to finish. Like, I'm just like, I just want this to be here forever. But, um, and then I'm, uh, and then after I eat, I'm like, oh, I wish I could rewind and go back and eat that again. Um, but that, all that to say, it's like, Eating slow and being mindful, one, that's a mindful technique, sure. like a mindfulness technique. It's just being aware. Um, but also like, it's cool. Like if you actually take the time to understand what that food is actually doing to your body. Right. We took a class in uh, senior year of college and it was nutritional biochem. And it was literally what the nutrients break down and do within your body after you eat it. And it's the coolest thing ever. And I promise it's it's not just for us science weird, sure, you know, sure. junkies, but it, it really is is like information that people should know on at least a surface level. Definitely. You don't need to know all the way down to like glycolysis and like all of that stuff. Sure. I can tell you if you want to. I sure I can do it like in my sleep. But it's, it doesn't have to be that deep, you know, it, it, like just understanding it from like a really basic level, that's easy enough for sure, people. Sure, sure. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, I can, I, I, I kind of want to just close by letting you speak um, and just kind of maybe you give you like your top three, like next steps. Hey, like what do you need to do to try to start taking control of your health today? Um, so I'll kind of just open that up and let you finish there. And then I'll tell them that we're going to link the ebook and so on and so forth and where they can find you on social and like all that stuff. Yeah, cool. absolutely. All right. So, I mean, I think the most important thing here is a takeaway, right? What, um, what would you say for the person that really actually wants to start taking control of their health? What would be like the next three steps for them to do right now? Like today, what could they do as soon as they listen to this? 
Yeah, absolutely. So that's great because this is exactly how I have my ebook set up. So really the first thing is just becoming self-aware. And what I mean by that is literally track out three days of your food, right? And it, some people are like, why do I have to do that or blah, blah, It's like, no, it's just literally looking at your eating pattern. Look to see what changes you can make like right off the bat. So for example, if somebody eats out at a restaurant five times a week, they can cut it back to maybe two because we're not gonna say stop eating out five times a week sure. just completely. That's not gonna be sustainable. So maybe starting by cutting it back to two, three times a week and making those small changes like that. So becoming, a, you have to become aware first. You, you need to, to really become aware. And then identify, identify changes that you can make immediately and then set goals for yourself. So that's again, how I have it set up in, in my ebook. But when I say goals, I mean like actual smart goals. So that could be like, if you have a specific body composition goal that you want, notice how I say like body composition, I, I won't ever say if you want to lose weight, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, if you have a specific body composition goal that you want, write that out, write out how you're going to do that, like specifically to a T in a time frame. Sure. And make sure that that time frame is obviously realistic. So I don't want someone to write, I'm going to lose 10 pounds in five days. I'm sure, like, sure. No, you're not. Sure. <laughs> like, no, I love that. Know? I mean, and, and it coincides with an episode that I did a few episodes back was in order to make the changes, you have to know what you want. Exactly. Right? And most people don't. Most people don't even take the time to ask themselves those questions like, hey, what's my, what do I want my life to look like in two years? What's the kind of career I want? How do I want to look? How do I want to feel? What's the kind of person I want to be? What's the kind of relationships I want to have? Right. Those, those all coincide with self-awareness. And I think right. that's a huge takeaway from this. Right. Yeah. Most people, when you ask that, people probably didn't expect me to just say become self-aware yeah. because everyone's like, oh, what's this like, you know, perfect diet. There is none. There's no perfect diet. It's what's perfect for you. And people are always like, what supplement can I take? What can I do here? Here, You need to understand yourself first. Sure. Like, sure. what do you need? Like, what are you lacking? What are your food preferences? What are your goals? And then, then and only then you can start making those sure. actual changes. Yeah, no, yeah. totally agree. And um, for everybody that's listening, most of the stuff that we talked about is in Milena's ebook. Yeah. Um, and we're going to link that in the description of this episode. Um, uh, if you guys want to, I think it depends on how you want to do it, whether you want to have them be able to download it or if you want to charge people for it, whatever you want to do with it. Um, and you, then you guys can have it. It's all yours. I want you to also <laughs> let everyone know where they can find you. Um, Milena posts a lot on social, um, especially recipes for food, um, just general good health habits. Um, and I follow it every single day. Uh, it's super beneficial. So where can they find you on social? So I have two. I have just Milena Elise, which is like my personal, which I still post workouts, like nutrition, all of that stuff. Um, so I'll, you can like write it out for yep. people. We'll put it in the description. And then Monumental Movements is the name of my business. And I have an Instagram for that. So you can link both. And I would follow her on LinkedIn too, because she posts like a lot of valuable, like specific type of information on LinkedIn. Thank you. Yes. Cool. And that's just Melina Ferrarese. You can find me. <laughs> yep. And those will all be linked in the description. Um, and, and really, like, I want you guys to throw some comments on this one and let us know, like, what do you want us to talk about in the future? Do you want me to interview more health things? Or would you like me to talk more about business or mindset? Um, you know, the whole purpose for this podcast, one, is to share lessons that I've learned through life, but two, to also cater to the listeners that are actually looking to grow. So yeah, that was awesome. I'm so stoked. I was your first guest. Like that I love was it too. insane. That was great. It was awesome. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, it was yep. awesome. We'll see you guys next time.